Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I got a special treat for you guys. Today we're gonna to be installing LED headlight bulbs into my Toyota Celica headlight housing. So in my last video we actually installed the headlight housing, but for some reason they came with H1 uh, halogen bulbs and not LED bulbs. So today we're just gonna fix that and put some LED bulbs into the housing. Now if you have the Spider Auto headlight bulbs for the Toyota Celica, you're probably gonna have the same problem. I don't think any of them came with LED uh, bulbs from the factory. They all came with halogens even though the LEDs in here and the halos have LEDs in them. The actual high beams and the low beams are halogen lights, which I think defeats the purpose. So today we're gonna fix that. Back to the trusty workbench, which is always a mess. So here's what we have to work with today. It's the Aki, A-U-K-E-E, -E, not Alki, that's what I thought it was at first, uh, LED headlight bulbs. Now these, if you'll remember from my last video, are the H1s. Yep, H1 size bulbs. The standard OEM Toyota Celica headlights come with H7 and 9005 uh, sized bulbs, but because we changed the headlights and because the Spider Auto ones don't use the same uh, housing or headlight sizes, we had to get H1 bulbs. These headlights are supposed to be very white, very bright, and they weren't all that expensive. And I'm not endorsed by them or anything like that. I'm, in fact, I don't really know how they work yet, but we'll find out. They had really good reviews on Amazon, and these are like all the things that matter to me when buying something on Amazon. Inexpensive, good reviews, that kind of thing. So I thought we'd give them a try. So if we open this up here, you got this little sheet with instructions on here for a whole bunch of different size headlights. You got your H13s, your H4s up there. To be honest, installing headlights isn't too difficult. The only thing that's worrying me about this whole install already is when I take out these headlights, you can see that they don't come with the correct kind of mounting bracket or plug that goes right into the Celica headlights that we saw last time. In fact, these just come with two kind of blade pin connectors. It kind of worries me a little bit to consider splicing even more of the headlight more than we did in the last video. But here's what they look like. You're supposed to have fans in here to keep it cool. You have your little probably power regulator box and then your blade pins on the end there. So that's the only set of bulbs I have to change today. You may be wondering why didn't I just buy two sets of H1s for both the high and the low beams since I'm gonna be taking the headlights out anyways and replace both of them at the same time. Well, there are a few reasons that I didn't wanna do that. So the first reason is I don't really know how well I'm gonna be able to connect these headlights to the low beam wiring harness in there. If I can get it to be a solid connection, pretty stable and easy, then I might just consider changing out the uh, high beams in the future. But for safety's sake, I really didn't want to be running on all spliced headlights. Which brings me to my second point. If for some reason these LED bulbs aren't as good as they say they are, or that uh, for some reason for me they break or they don't work or anything like that, I don't want to not have a set of headlights I can use if that happens. And because I know the high beam halogens work in here. I'm gonna keep them for now until these LED headlights prove themselves a little bit to me. And the only other reason is the only time you see the high beams anyways during the day, uh, during the daytime running lights, unless you need them during night, but I never use them. It's pretty well lit out here, so I never really have to rely on my high beams to get around anywhere. So today we're only gonna be changing the low beam bulbs to LEDs, and I'll show you how to do that. So actually the first thing I'm gonna do is move the car against this garage and keep it there and turn on the low beams so that I can measure how far up the garage the low beams go since I had already centered them and adjusted them for height. And that way when I change to the LEDs in the future, I'll be able to either adjust them exactly the same way or check to see whether they're uh, still adjusted correctly. All right, so as you can see, I turned on my low beams right there, and we're just gonna mark that line straight across the top of where those beams are with some tape or something. That way, when we put the LEDs in, we can check to make sure it's around the same area. What I'm gonna do is start up here by loosening this 10 millimeter bolt, which holds the top of the headlight housing in. Okay, so after you take that top bolt off, there's going to be another bolt under here, but you're gonna to have to take this little plastic 
plate off that goes all the way across this bumper top. And you can do that just by removing these little tabs. There's usually more of them in these little holes over here, but I've already got them out. Okay, now that we took that little black piece of plastic off, you can see in this hole there's another bolt. That bolt is the one we're going to want to take out to unlock the side of the housing. Okay, now there is just one more bolt that we have to worry about in order to pull this whole housing out. And that is this bolt right there. Now the only way you can reach that and I cantered the wheel a little bit so you can see, is we're going to have to take the inside splash guard out from this wheel well area and there's gonna be a bolt that's connecting this top piece of your, your uh, fender to this piece of the bumper. If you take that out, you should be able to bend away the bumper enough to get to that bolt, which will release the headlight from the housing. And now you can see in there, I don't know how well you can see that, there's that bolt that is connecting the fender to the bumper. I'm gonna take that out and then we should be able to access the bolt that's holding the headlight. Now you may also consider taking off the bolt that's connected under here so that you can pull the bumper down to access this part. And the only other thing you might wanna consider is taking off this bolt that's connected around the place that you stuck your 10 millimeter in to release the side of the headlight. Once this bends out of the way, you don't have to worry about cracking your bumper when you pull it down. And now that the bumper is separated, you can see right there, I don't know how well you can see that, but that one that's sticking out right there, you can actually trace a line from the plastic in your headlight to that bolt, and that's the one we're gonna wanna take out. All right, now once you get those out, you should be able to angle the headlight away from the housing just like that and just pull it right out. Be careful about any wires that you have attached there. All right guys, so essentially all I've done is flipped the headlight on its side. Be careful about all these wires you've got running if you have aftermarket headlights. If you have stock headlights, you can just disconnect them. They're pretty easily organized. But this bulb up here, which is the top one, that is going to be the low beams, which we will be replacing today. So we have some good access to it. We can see the wires that we had spliced already before. So let's take it out and see if we can fit these other bulbs in here without having to make many modifications. So I took the dust boot off and I undid this little wire harness here that's usually holding them in. And I took out this H1 size bulb. Now you can see on that bulb, the very bottom, it is a blade pin style connector, which is probably excellent news for me because that means that I can likely just put the other ones, slide the other ones in, and hopefully they should work. Let's take the new LEDs now and stick them in and just try it and see what happens. Okay, so something right off the bat I'm noticing is that as I try and put it in here, this, because it's flat, has to go in a certain way to enter the headlight housing. This, the piece underneath it that holds it still because it's notched like that, has to be going a very specific way to allow them both to enter and lock into place. Now, luckily for me, these ones that allow you to twist that notch to get it to fit. So the flat side of this disc here, you can twist it to enter the headlight housing. If you don't have that, you might have a problem. You might have to take this disc off because you can usually do that and try and add it on after you enter the headlight or custom make a housing for it. All right guys, so I got the first LED bulb in there. Um, I did not have to create a custom bracket to get it to fit. What I did have to do, however, is use the latching pin that they used to keep the headlights in. I really had to modify that. I have to bend it around this thick tube in the center because the other headlights, the H1 headlights, aren't that thick. So you can see that thick uh, piece of metal right in the center there. This little metal tab bar here that you use to pry down the headlights and keep it in place, goes almost straight across because the original H1 headlight bulbs are super thin. So you have to bend that metal bar around the center to get it to really lock into place. And as you can see, it's pretty, pretty sturdy. I don't think it's really gonna go anywhere. The only other thing that I have to keep an eye on is this, this boot right here. I'll have to probably modify something for that. All right, so luckily for me, it looks like those blade pin connectors are going to work out. So before we do anything else, I'm gonna turn on the headlights and just check to make sure they work and that I'm not missing anything important. All right, they work. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, definitely working. All right guys, so quick update. So the original boot, the dust boot that went over that headlight assembly just wasn't big enough. So what I did was I cut a hole in the top of it so that the wires and the box for those headlights can go through. And that way the fan is exposed to the air, but then I just covered and sealed the rest of it with 
uh, electrical tape. All right, guys, so as you can see, the side is working. So what I'm gonna do for right now is just check, make sure all the other lights work. Then I'm going to reinstall those bolts and then put this side of the bumper back on before we do the other side. All right, guys, so getting those LED bulbs on this side of the car exactly the same way. Same three screws, same placement, same everything. So once you get them both in, what I would recommend doing is turn on the car and test every light that you can. Just make sure nothing is shorting, that you have all the wires going to the right places. And obviously to see if they work, uh, make sure your turn signals work, your daytime running lights work, your high beams, everything. All right guys, so it looks like everything is working. I checked both the lights, I checked all the functions, turn signals, high beams, low beams, everything is good. So obviously you're just gonna reverse the order that you did to take the headlight out. Just put those three screws back in and then refit your bumper on and put those screws in. And that's pretty much it guys, you're good to go after that. I'll do a little edit so you guys can see a little before and after that I took from this morning's halogen lights to these LEDs. So get ready for that. 